thank you so much for everyone uh, for being here for this uh, very uh, incredibly damn important uh, talk about uh, digital asset management uh, in the remote age. Um, I'm Adam Good. I'm a senior strategist at Parsons TKO. I'm happy to be talking with you about this today. A uh, few uh, just uh, orders of, um, point of points of order. Uh, microphones have been turned off and cameras have been uh, turned off as well. If you have questions, uh, comments, anything's unclear, you want to talk about stuff, feel free to post it in chat and we'll go through that and respond either during the presentation or in uh, Q&A at the end. And also wanted to let you know that the webinar is being recorded and will be distributed after the session along with the presentation deck. Uh, and also there will be a few uh, polls uh, that'll pop up throughout, uh, throughout the conversation as well. So really happy to have everyone here with us today. All right, so it's about damn time. Um, we are talking about improving digital file management in the remote age. Um, you know, it, it, with the pandemic forcing many organizations to go either partially or fully remote, um, managing your assets, uh, managing in particular uh, your digital files across the organization uh, in a coherent and structured and transparent way is, uh, is really important. Um, and we're gonna talk through uh, some frameworks and perspectives on you know, what digital asset management really is and what it takes to effectively uh, get um, asset management rolling uh, uh, or improved in your organization. So a quick note about Parsons CKO and about how we see the possibilities of your organization. This will, this will inform um, how I'm talking about digital asset management uh, because we believe in a philosophy called engagement architecture, which really treats your outreach platform as a holistic ecosystem. So it's not just a piece of technology here that does one thing and you know people that are doing their, their own things and content that you have over here, everything is connected and those things need to be understood and uh, improved together to help advance your mission. So we're always talking about, you know, what is the, what are the key engagements you're trying to drive with your audiences and how do you have strategy that supports that? And then that lets us focus on the people and processes and platforms that are critical to actually succeeding in that strategy and driving engagement. So even though uh, this talk is about DAM, uh, which often uh, refers to digital asset management as a product or a platform, we really see it as a capability. Um, asset management is a capability that connects your people and the platforms they use and your processes uh, to advance your work. All right, so what's the damn idea? I'm going to make a lot of damn jokes uh, uh, throughout throughout the talk, so please excuse me. I can never resist a good pun, um, particularly when it's such an obvious one. Um, so what's the what's the damn idea? So it's not we're not talking about this kind of dam. Uh, we're not talking about a dam that you just sort of put in place and it pools all of your resources and then they they sit there. Um, we're talking about digital asset management. Um, and my good friend um, Lizzo uh, just um, uh, we were talking about this and she wrote a song uh, inspired uh, inspired by this talk uh, called It's About Damn Time. Um, because I think uh, organi organizations um, know <laughs> that they have problems organizing their their digital assets uh, and need to get them uh, more coordinated and consolidated. Um, so what do we mean by DAM? Um, we're talking about the ability to organize assets so they can be found and used throughout your organization. Again, we're not just talking about the technology that helps make this possible. We're talking about an overall ability or capability um, to organize your assets. And by assets, anything that you use, uh, particularly um, images, files, video, um, content, pictures, <laughs> uh, reports, um, anything that people need to be able to find and use throughout the organization can be considered an asset. Um, you know, many of you probably are coming from communications backgrounds, so you might be familiar with doing some degree of asset management, maybe in your CMS. So if you're working with a website like WordPress or really most modern websites, you can upload images into your website CMS and use them on the website. Um, that's one kind of use of assets in your organization. We're talking about taking a step back and saying, hey, where do we store all of our assets so that people from different parts of the organization can find them at different times? 
um, and there's a, a lot of benefits to this. So um, probably you have some degree, if you're like most organizations that we work with, you have some ad hoc damming. Um, so files can be in any one or any, all of these uh, locations. So maybe some of your important files are in a Google Drive or on SharePoint or something called a Q Drive. Um, maybe they're in Dropbox. Maybe you've been experimenting with Dropbox. Maybe some parts of your organization use Dropbox and the other uh, uses Google Drive. Um, maybe a lot of files are in people's emails. Uh, maybe some, maybe you have a hard drive from five years ago that you always have to dig up if you're looking for that one perfect image. Um, or maybe they're print pieces, uh, they're in a folder on an intern's desk. Uh, so we see this all the time uh, with, with organizations, particularly as they grow, um, that assets are everywhere. And uh, the fact that they're everywhere and in different systems with no kind of clear, consistent vision and governance about where things go leads to a, a, a big mess and a lot of uh, um, uh, frustrations, wasted effort, inefficiencies, et cetera. Um, so we're going to start with the, the, the first poll um, as, you know, this quick survey of everyone who's here. I want to know what your dam situation is. What's your dam situation? Uh, so we have no formal dam and we desperately need one. Um, we have a dam, but we don't use it well. And we have an awesome dam and we're just here for the puns. So uh, in, in this sense, we are talking about um, kind of a more specific digital asset management platform. Um, like maybe you're using Binder, maybe you're using Google Drive, maybe you're using Dropbox. Um, so the, you know, the degree of which you have something formal in place. All right, so we ha I see a couple people have awesome dams and they're here for the puns, that's fantastic. Um, oh, wow, great. People are so fast, thank you. Um, all right, so the, looks like we've got about, 58% um, have a dam, but don't use it well. I'm going to share the results. Okay. Uh, so uh, kind of a good mix of people who um, don't have a formal dam and, and need one and others who have a dam, but don't use it well. Um, and that that's great. This is for you. Um, because a lot of the principles we're talking about can help you improve the use of a given dam. Um, again, with any technology platform, it's really only as good as the, the clarity of your vision for using it and then how you execute on that vision. Um, so we'll talk about some ways that you can get clarity on how to use dams more effectively, as well as just you know what, what dams are and how we can um, more effectively use them. So great. Thank you for that. All right. Quickly, why should I give a dam uh, about dams? Um, I, I touched on this before, but basically, if you're like most organizations, you might be kind of a hot mess um, in terms of where your assets are. Maybe you have scattered files online and off time, offline, no system or too many systems, no process or too many processes um, for you know images from public relations go here and videos from media go here and they have their own processes in their own places. Um, you probably find that finding things takes a long time. <laughs> you might have random requests that take a long time to fill and increasingly um, our teams are distributed. So DAM is, I like to think of DAM as a new way. And I, I put this scene from one of my favorite movies, Wet Hot American Summer, when they do this training montage about learning a new way. It's kind of like this mystical experience of you know, leveling up um, and really focusing on DAM lets you kind of increase your organizational efficiency and, and realize things you never thought were possible. Um, so it helps you get organized. It helps you get more efficient. It helps you get much more consistent so that, you know, your images, you're always showing the, the images that you want to show. And you're not showing ones that, you know, maybe fell out of favor two years ago and are still just kind of floating around. Uh, it also improves your institutional memory, um, especially with turnover being an issue now with a lot of organizations. If, if you don't have a comprehensive system and governance and process around it, when one person goes, they take all of that knowledge with them. So it really helps improve institutional memory. Um, it makes it easier to collaborate if people can be looking at the same resources together. Um, and then it's easier to get inspired by materials that people haven't seen. When we've worked with organizations, a lot of times one, one group will have a, a lot of interesting content 
that another group just doesn't even know about. And when they come together to the table and say, here, let's get it all in one system, people start getting inspired about, oh, we could do this, we could use this, we could create this new campaign, you know, featuring this, these, uh, these images or this video. So this is, uh, you know, truly a kind of a secret sauce uh, capability for organizations. Um, so this is just a, a quote from one of our um, one of our clients uh, at American Forest, who we helped them choose and implement a dam. Uh, again, going from being disorganized over lots of different systems to really clarifying what you use the dam for. Um, how do you want to search it? What do you want to look for? How do you want to find those materials? Um, and then creating not only a, a system but also a process uh, for getting there. Um, shifts the time that you're going to be using from finding things, sending requests, just gathering the materials to really doing more good with the materials that you have. All right. So everyone I'm sure is very excited uh, and is like, okay, damn me. Give me a damn. I'm ready to go. I give a damn. Give me a damn. Uh, not so fast. So again, we want to focus on the, the critical elements of really any um, any organizational initiative or organizational capability. You need to talk about your people and your processes and the governance that you have in place around a particular asset or capability. Again, DAM is a capability. It's not just software. Um, it's the people who use and access your assets, like your staff contractors, other external users, who all needs to relate or use the system in question, in this case, Dan, um, who needs to use it? What do they need to do with it? How do they like to work? What are the requirements, right? So for contractors, you might want them to see some specific pieces of content and not others. So really understanding all the people who are going to be involved uh, in your asset management or to touch it in any way is critical. Process. So really figuring out what the process currently is and where you want the process to go. What are the steps that it takes to find, edit, and deploy your digital assets you know, in any use case? So a lot of times what we do when we come in, this where we start is with people and process. You know, what is your organization doing now to find, to find assets and how are they using them? How do they want to be able to find assets? What kinds of things that are they looking for? What do they want to do with it? Um, are, and getting those people together to uh, paint kind of a holistic picture of what ultimately the, the capability of asset management needs to look like. Then we really focus on the technology. Where, where is it stored currently? What works, what doesn't? Do we need a one size fits all kind of one dam for everything? Or can some assets still live in one place and some assets live in another and they're just tightly integrated? So the technology is really an enabling piece uh, for your people to use your processes. And then finally, governance is the overlay of all of these that provides rules and, and guidelines for, for using assets. So all too often, you know, organizations will get a new technology, they'll get the training um, or onboarding from, um, from the vendor, and then it's kind of off to the races. Okay, great, now we have a system. Um, but there isn't clear maintained documentation and governance about how the system is set up, uh, who needs to use the system, what are the processes to go through. So these are all tightly interlocking parts uh, that will really enable you to, um, to, to make the most of asset management. Um, and just to pull the pull back a little bit and say, uh, you know, when we talk about digital asset management, it's not just a matter of finding stuff, putting all these things in a location and then finding it. You really need to tease apart the process of where you know, from, from left to right here, sourcing your assets. Where all of, where's your stuff coming from? Um, again, in with remote teams uh, and people using contractors and external vendors, your your assets can come from lots of different places. Um, where are those coming from? How do you ingest them? How do you get them into the system and then refine and edit them? So, are, how do you, how are you adding metadata? How are you organizing them into to folders or using tags um, that? Are kind of agreed upon uh, to to help people in the organization on the right over here use the assets. So that flow of getting things, putting them in the system, 
refining them so that they're kind of clearly, uh, you know, labeled and set up to your systems and structures and then using them. Um, layer underneath that is really the idea of collection management and system administration. Uh, these can be large, complex systems, um, even if the end user experience is seamless and straightforward, it still takes a, a fair amount of management um, on, on the back end and system administration. So one, one of the key pieces we talk about is you know, who is going to own this system? Who's going to be responsible for the maintenance of the system? Um, and you know, sometimes that's in the comms department, sometimes that's in brands, sometimes that's in IT. Um, and that's part of the process of you know, who are the people uh, involved uh, in, in DAM. And then finally, that underlying layer of governance, again, that documentation, you know, how do we use the system? Who is it able to do what? What type of approvals do we need? Um, this is all stuff that, again, happens in an ad hoc fashion in most organizations. It's informal. Maybe there are some guidelines that someone wrote up in a Google Drive for themselves and one colleague, and it's sitting there and they know about it, uh, but really having clear, consistent, uh, and understood and accessible documentation. Uh, is really critical. All right, so we have another poll. Um, so we talked about uh, in, in the last one about, uh, you know, do you have a dam? Are you looking for a dam? Um, this one we want to ask about your governance. So, you know, the, how, how is your, what is the state of your, of your dam governance? Is it non-existent? Um, so you don't really have any clear processes documented around asset management. Um, is it okay? Um, or is it great? Um, and then you get a, a gold star and get to leave early um, if you have amazing governance. All right, I am going to share the results here. Excellent. Okay, yeah, so we, we have kind of a, a, a similar split. Um, so there two people said they have great uh, clear governance that's consistently followed. I'm going to call on you during the question and answer uh, and, and ask <laughs> who you are and what you're doing, because uh, that, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so, you know, uh, again, we see a lot of organizations that don't have clear processes documented, and, and often that's the first step um, that, that we can do with you or that you can do on your own is just writing down, you know, even if you don't have a document yet, go ahead and write it down. You know, something that we have to do frequently is find headshots of staff to send to media outlets, write that down, and then, oh, here's how we find them. Here's how we find those things. So even if it's not documented, you can start documenting it at any time, really, um, or collecting the ad hoc documentation that you have. Um, or, uh, you know, it looks like about 60% have a system that there are many gaps in ad hoc processes. Um, for those in that situation, uh, a lot of times what's good is to do kind of a documentation audit and say, here's the documents we have, here are other processes that we know are going on <laughs> or other systems that we, we think are going on or know are going on and have those cataloged um, so that you, you have kind of a, a, a big picture of the knowns and the known unknowns. Yeah, the known unknowns or the known maybes. So uh, I, again, this is all just to stress that Governance is really important. Understanding the processes that are in place, um, either formal or informal, uh, is, is key to making the most of DAM as a capability. Another, another reason I really want to emphasize this piece of it um, is that uh, you know, a lot of times organizations say, OK, well, we need a platform. We, we need a tool. There's these great tools. Let's just get one. Um, but if you don't have the process to support it, you know, clearly going into selecting a dam or implementing it, um, you're going to end up with a better tool, but in somewhat of a sim similar situation that you currently are. Okay. All right. How to dam your org. So let's get into this. 
Um, so you can dam your org in three easy steps. And I'll, I'll go through this fairly quickly and, and talk about some of the, the ways that you can use these ideas, even if you already have a dam in place. Um, but really it's about getting clear on the requirements. And again, this is something that you can consistently do, especially as you're using the system. You can continue to clarify exactly how you want to use it and what you want to do with it. Um, if you're in this dam selection uh, stage, then you definitely want to evaluate different vendors. And then ultimately you want to implement and you want to have a clear plan for implementing. Um, so we'll go through a couple of these. So with gathering requirements, you really want to understand your users and processes. I've touched on this a lot, but who's using the system? What do they need to use it for? Really getting granular with your use cases. Um, storage space and file types. How, many, how much stuff do you have? <laughs> what types of files do you need to manage? Is it just digital files? Do you want some, some degree of uh, um, physical archiving to happen? Um, do you do audio? Do you do video? Um, are there financial records that you want in this asset management system that would only be available to um, some part of the organization? Or do you want grant reports? Um, so again, anything that can be a thing <laughs> can be an asset. Um, so a lot of times it, we, we, we think about DAM from a communications context, um, but there are also robust uh, systems that you know, allow and encourage you to organize other files as well. Um, search use cases and taxonomy, we'll get into that uh, a little bit more, but again, really getting specific with the people using the DAM, what are you looking for? What terms do you want to find? How do you want to find things? What do you want to use things for? Um, really getting granular helps you select and then uh, implement a system. Uh, features and integrations. What are the kind of the, the core features that you need? Um, uh, what does it need to integrate with? Do you need one place that can feed content into a website? Um, do you need to pull in content from a content pool? Uh, et, et cetera. So there's a lot of, you know, if you have other systems in your uh, uh, engagement architecture, um, now is the time to kind of uh, document them. All right, so evaluating vendors. Um, there's, a, you know, a, a lot of vendors uh, are kind of have similar features and functionality. Um, and that's why we have features at the bottom. You know, once, you've you, once you get a sense of your requirements, a lot of the, a, a lot of systems will have similar feature sets. What you want to do is get demo meaningful demos that let you assess the usability of the platform because it's something you know you or many people in your organization are going to be using regularly. It's got to feel good, right? It's got to feel usable. Um, uh, of course, cost is a factor. You need to think of how many users you have, how much space you're going to need. Um, one thing that we really uh, recommend that uh, organizations look for is onboarding and support. You know, to what degree. Um, do you need really in-depth onboarding and support to get the system up and running? And then to what degree uh, does the vendor provide that? Because there are some solutions that just say, great, you're installed and you're ready to go. Um, and there are others that will really set you up with a, uh, a representative who will help you um, set up the system really to your to your liking and provide in-depth training to make sure you're really set up for success um know what type of organization you are like if you have someone who is like knows this stuff pretty well and is you know has the time on their plate to do the implementation work themselves you might not need a solution that provides as robust of uh, an onboarding experience so that gets the the third stage which is implementation you know so so many uh, initiatives and organizations rise and fall on how well they're rolled out in the organization. So you want to be planning from the beginning um, of how you are going to start using this new platform, start evolving this new capability. So that includes who's using it. You know, maybe you train a, a core group of users first, and then a wider group, and then a wider group. Um, and that actually gets my next point, starting small. Um, you know, who are the core users using it most regularly, who have the most, uh, you know, kind of solid use cases um, and start there. And then you can use that to solidify your processes. Again, along the way, you were saying, here's how we're gonna do this. Here's how we're gonna do this. But then as that small core group of users is, is starting to use it, they go, oh, actually it's more effective if we do X instead of Y. Great, update the documentation and now that's changed. So you're making iterative enhancements along the way. You know, 
one of the the pieces I, I I really like to recommend in most projects is you identify um, your you know your project ambassadors or project champions or people who are really going to who are eager to get the most benefit um, from a new capability and involve them early on. Make sure that their needs are heard, and then as you're planning your rollout, find ways to help them be ambassadors. Uh, to others. Um, so that could be, you know, a lunch and learn, hey, we've got this great new dam, here's how I used it um, to, you know, speed up the time for creating emails for a campaign. Um, and these are some things that I've learned. So socializing the capability is really important. Okay, which dam should I get? I'm, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. Um, again, at, at various price points, a lot of the feature sets, um, uh, are, are fairly similar for a lot of organizations. Uh, you know, we we recommend something kind of in the the middle tier, where you have a dedicated, robust dam platform that can handle multiple file types, um, lots of permissioning uh, specific. So you can say, hey, this person sees these assets, but this person doesn't. Really great for if you have contractors doing work for you, like how the, how they can provide assets. Um, the the three uh, uh, examples in the middle kind of get to that. Like it's a it's a dedicated platform. It's robust. It has good support. It has good onboarding. Um, it is, is what a lot of organizations that we work with kind of need. Um, the other uh, the other direction to the left would be something that's more minimal and and also cheaper. Um, so some people use Box or Google Drive. I, I'm sure many organizations on or many folks on this call probably use Google Drive to some ex extent. Um, and again, that can be fine depending on, again, who's using the system, what you need it for, um, uh, you know, what your what your budget is. Maybe you can't afford um, a, a dedicated dam and you just need to know how to, uh, you know, optimize Google Drive um, uh, as a dam. So there are minimal solutions. I would say that the more minimal you go, the more the you know the fewer kind of advanced search features you're going to be able to have, and the more work your processes and governance are going to have to do, um, because the the mid tier and above have a lot of things about managing all of your users and managing their permission levels and version control uh, and and uh, taxonomy, being able to find things in lots of different ways um, that a minimal system is just not going to let you do. Um, and enterprise really gets into, do you have a lot of different technical platforms with a lot of assets um, that you need to integrate really well? So again, a lot of these are, are primarily used by businesses um, that are, you know, have offices around the world and are dealing with tons of, you know, you know millions of assets um, uh, and, and connecting them in a really tightly, uh, in, a, in a really tight way. Um, so again, it it'll it'll vary based on the organization uh, and what your needs are, um, but this is kind of a spectrum of what you can look at. All right, where's the damn JPEG? Um, searching and taxonomy. So I, I really love to focus on this part of the conversation because it gets to the heart of what the what the dam is for. What the, what's the dam point? What's what's all this dam talk about? It's it's about finding things. Uh, finding stuff that your organization has so that you can do things with it. Uh, and a key part of you know, selecting and then organizing your assets and writing processes around them is really understanding what um, people are looking for. Uh, so I, I'm reminded of this the scene from the first Matrix movie uh, where they're about to go into to battle and they say, we need guns, we need lots of guns. And then just this, you get the swoosh of racks and racks and racks of well, guns, which is, I guess, America these days, but whatever. Um, the point is you, you need things, right? And then you get a lot of things and you want to find the the, the looking for. And taxonomy is the thing that allows you to do that. Um, so what we mean by a damn taxonomy here is a classification system that lets you categorize and organize your assets um, so that they can be found and used through searching and filtering. So what do we mean by that? Okay, another, uh, another way of thinking about this is, you know, taxonomy is kind of a technical term. 
other uh, uh, terms for it can be categories or groups or labels or tags or lists, basically how, how things are organized. So one of the things you can do uh, to find taxonomies is you look through your website information architecture. You know, uh, probably that is based on some sort of taxonomy. Maybe you focus on different issues and each of those issues is a term in a taxonomy. Um, so there are a lot of ways that you can identify what taxonomies you're using. And a great way to do that is to really, uh, really get in there with, again, the people that are um, looking for assets in your system in the first place and asking them what they're looking for. Um, so this is an exercise that, that you can do. Um, and I think we'll take just a second. You can do this on your own. Um, but again, thinking through, you know, the, the, the whole point of, a, of a, an asset management platform and process uh, is to be able to find things so you can do things. Um, so think about your, your use cases, your direct use cases, and um, fill this out. So in order to create blank, right? So think of the, what you would use a dam for. In order to create a particular thing, I need to find what? I need to find an image. I need to find a video, okay? You're probably going to want to be more specific than that, or you'd like to be. You want your system to help you be more specific. So maybe in order to create a new campaign landing page about climate change, I need to find video that um, includes one of our partners and is sponsored by a particular partner um, that is about climate change and is recent. So it's you know was made within the past year. So I'll pause there for just a second. Um, so you can think of a, of a use case um, for yourself. This exercise is something that you can do yourself and that you can do with your teams, the people who are going to be using the dam. And th this is really at the core of um, making sure that your assets are well-structured because they should be well-structured so people can use them. Um, so I'll pause there for just a second. And if anyone wants to put their use case in chat, that would be awesome. We can see what people are wanting to use a dam for. And also if there are any questions about that exercise, feel free to ask in chat. All right, does anyone have any examples of searching use cases? So you can put them in chat. And if if not, feel free to put in chat as well that there's just the types of things that you are frequently looking for uh, uh, in in your dam. Or in in the absence of uh, of a dam, the types of things you're looking for regularly um, that you think a dam could help with. Awesome. Great. So I see some, um, I see some good examples uh, coming in. Thank you. Um, 
and Kelly Davis has one. In order to create a case study report, I need to find relevant images and approved content. That's great. That's a that's a great case uh, a use case um, because it's you know I'm going to create a particular type of content. Um, I need to find relevant images, um, and so the relevant piece is where we would dig in and say, okay, what what is relevant? Um, so it's relevant maybe because of um, you know, the person who sponsored the report, or it's relevant because of the location of the case study, or it's relevant because it covers one of our main topic areas, or because it covers a particular grant uh, management area. Um, so that that I'm honing in on that keyword of relevance, because that really helps you unpack your taxonomy. So I'm looking for to create a report on a case study, what are the types of images that I need? They need to be relevant. What does relevant mean uh, within your organization? Um, and then the other piece of that approved content is great. Uh, and that's another thing that would be considered uh, kind of metadata um, around an asset. You know, is this approved? Yes or no? Or what part of the approval process is it in? Does it need to be reviewed? Um, those pieces uh, about kind of actually managing the assets, approving them, reviewing them, putting them into kind of periodic review cycles. So you can say, hey, is this logo updated? Is this uh, deck uh, updated? Does it need to be updated? Um, those are types of things that you're, that should be handled partly through your governance and documentation, but the better your dam is, the more it'll help you do those things. Uh, so um, Google Drive and Box don't have as many capabilities about saying, hey, this asset is approved or this asset needs to be reviewed. Um, a good dam will let you uh, do those those kinds of things. Um, someone says that they need to manage legal uh, arrangements across the board uh, across the organization. Great, Le like legal agreements. That's fantastic. That's another use case where, uh, again, maybe that's a very small sliver of your organization needs to see that. Um, so it's not something that is ever going to go up on the website <laughs> or even to a, even to the communications or marketing team. But it's in one um, one place for the legal team um, that then they can reference and allow some others to see. Um, so again, it's not just um, um, uh, uh, you know, it's not just digital assets. Um, so, uh, Sunita said, yeah, uh, more about organizing all assets, not just digital images, all of these concepts apply. Um, so again, thinking through, you know, what are people trying to look for and what are, what are the terms? How, how do they think about the types of things they're looking for, um, is, is the place to start. Um, and you know a lot of the same principles apply. So a legal agreement, if you have that tagged as for review, you know, or what what is the what is the stage of a process uh, that, that the a particular asset is in, um, who should be able to see it, and when and how and under what conditions, um, you know, maybe you have um, you know people that you want their permissions to expire after a certain amount of time. Um, a, a lot of particularly when you're dealing with stuff that's uh, you know, of a sensitive nature, you want to be able to have visibility and control over who sees what and when. Um, there's another example, create polling reports need to find our infographics from previous reports for comparison. Um, yeah, absolutely. So basically being able to say, hey, I want infographics. And that's a type, right? And that's a taxonomy. So we have a type of images, they're infographics, that's the type. Um, how, when was it last used? Or uh, we have here a possible taxonomy number of uses or date. Um, so these are all things that you can then put in the system to make sure that it tracks. So you can look up an infographic and say, hey, we've used this three times <laughs> in, in our last three reports. Uh, and then you can say, do we want to use it again? Do we want to update it? Um, so you can have a lot of that rich context around your assets. And I think that that phrase rich context is really what you're getting more of with that kind of mid-tier um, uh, and above dam solution, you're getting a lot more context around the asset um, that is either baked into the system or you can easily add to the system. Um, so, you know, where was it created? Who created it? Um, what's the orientation? You know, for for visual assets, this is often really important. Hey, for for a particular section uh, of uh, of a web page, we need a horizontal asset that is a certain size, right? That is that is valuable taxonomy and metadata information that, that you can put in the system so that people can find those things faster. And they're not having to go through a folder that says website images. <laughs> it's just a bunch of images. Um, 
Okay, uh, another example. In order to build a social calendar, I need to identify specific images to support posts. Some are internal, some come from partners, and some are bot obtained online and need proper attribution. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. That is a, that is a fantastically rich use case. Um, yeah, so building a social calendar, right? So that's sort of the, the, um, uh, the end goal and what are all the posts that are going to, to, to go into the social calendar. And then figuring out what the images are. Um, so being able to look at particular images and say, okay, we have images from uh, people in internal teams. We have some images that are coming from partners. We have some are, that we bought and need attribution. Those are all things that you can bake into your asset management platform. So you can have as part of any asset, you can say, um, is from a partner, yes or no? If so, what? which partner is it from? So then you can say, hey, I just wanna see images that are from a particular partner or that are from, you know, from a particular, um, uh, you know, particular source, for example, um, that information, you can uh, kind of what we're getting to is like, the more of this you bake into the system, the more you can do really advanced searches and filters and say, hey, I want to find all images that are in a square aspect ratio that were taken within the last year that have been approved for use. Um, and boom, then you have your list. And then you can clearly see, okay, these are ones that need attribution right? Because they, they'll say, you know, associated with the asset needs attribution um, or is from a partner, consult with partner before reusing something like that. Um, so the, the, the more specific you can get with those use cases, the more you can, you can start to, to build out that, that taxonomy model again, which is all, it's all ultimately built to help you do your work better <laughs> and more efficiently. Um, I think that is it for there. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go to, all right. We have a questionnaire. Um, answer the damn questionnaire. Uh, this is something that we um, have put together that you can fill out on your own. You don't need to send this back to us. You can, if you like. Um, but as you are um, thinking about your, your journey with asset management, where you are, um, these are some of the key questions you need to be considering. Uh, so what, what, what are you ultimately trying to achieve um, with, with asset management in the organization? Um, you know, then get into the nitty gritties. Like where you, where's everything stored? <laughs> A huge part of it is just figuring out where everything is or might be. Um, storage, you know, you that's, that's important. Maybe you already know, like we've got this much space on our old drive. We need this much. That's something you can figure out. Um, how many users need to manage the dam and be able to search? That's a key part because a lot of organ, a lot of vendors will um, uh, will charge based on number of users. So some combination of storage space and number of users. You might have, if you're a smaller team, you might have one or two people that actually need to have a user seat in order to manage the system. But you need to be able to say, hey, we have 30 people that just need to be able to come in and search for assets. Uh, and those can be tiered out differently depending on depending on the platform. Um, to what degree do you already have governance? Uh, we've talked about that. And again, even if you say, hey, we don't have much governance, just documenting what you think you know or, or where, where things might be can be a really good start. Um, oh yes, and uh, thank you, Mickey. We also have a, uh, if you wanted to fill out the questionnaire uh, in an online um, uh, survey, we've got that up as well. There's a link in chat. Uh, and we'll provide um, additional links as well. Um, thinking about, again, that, that taxonomy uh, and any kind of advanced features that you might have. So I think with that, I'm going to pause and see if there are any questions. Um, there is a Bridget says, I think my team has an issue waiting through all the docs that are often titled similarly. Yep. Especially when many are years old and or have updated versions as well. We recently keep coming up needing to know who took photos that we have stored. Uh, yeah, all, all kind of uh, very common and very <laughs> frustrating uh, issues that, that a dam, um, a dam, again, combined with good governance um, uh, can help you solve. Um, you know, so I talked before about like Google Drive versus some of these other systems. Google Drive, you can do some degree of this if you say, 
here's the naming convention. Everyone has to follow it. <laughs> like if you are naming a document, title it this way. Um, that is governance. That kind of governance can be hard to enforce, um, you know, or you have to really make a habit of enforcing the governance. Um, I mean, it's good practice anyway, but that's that's a, a, a common challenge. Um, then Google, you can kind of like sort by date, last edited, owned, etc. Um, yeah, everyone seems to have their own system. A absolutely. Um, and that that's the perennial struggle <laughs> within organizations and systems. Um, but that is, again, when you when you go to something like a dedicated dam, you can say, um, you know, who took the photo? Like that's a part of your taxonomy. And then you have a list of 10 staff members in the dam. And then you can say, oh, Adam took these 20 photos. And Adam as an object in the taxonomy as a user can be staff or consultant or former staff or partner. Um, so you can really get granular and say, hey, we want to find um, you know, any asset that Adam produced. So even if I leave, in five years, if you're damn set up and you say, hey, remember that really awesome guy, Adam? He took this great picture of a chicken. I really need to find it. You can go back in the dam and say, okay, Adam, you know, pictures <laughs> pictures from Adam or pictures of chickens, um, uh, you know, you, you, that a, a dam enables you to do that. Um, uh, Zinia says, one issue we have is having the waiver, yep, to use the photos organized to match the photos we want to use. Yeah, absolutely. So that's something where, um, when you have a structured dam, I, I, this would be really hard to do, I think, in, in Google Drive. Uh, again, could do it, um, but it becomes much easier if you have something that says, you know, like for a particular photo or an asset type, you can say requires waiver, yes or no. Um, and then maybe a sub thing would be has waiver, <laughs> yes or no, um, or waiver needs to update. And then those files can link together. And so that you can then you can run a search and say, you know, uh, for, yeah, photos, uh, photos without waivers. And then you can go, okay, these are, we know we need waivers for these photos. So let's go ahead and get them proactively. Um, or, um, you know, if you've gone out in the field or if you have a vendor that's gone to field and taken a bunch of photos as part of their upload process, you can define really clear, um, uh, processes to say, when you upload photos, put them in this folder with this naming convention put the waiver with them um, or put the waiver in a separate folder. And then you can have automations that when they upload those, those will sync up together. Um, th there are a lot of different ways to, to do that based on uh, or depending on the, the, the vendor in question. Um, but that is definitely a frequent use case of assets with some sort of waiver or permission or release or something um, that, yeah, there, there, are, there are tools in place in, the, in a lot of the, the dams that can do that. Okay, well, I think with that, I'm going to go to my right screen um, and just say thank you so much for uh, for for joining us. I just want to um, throw this up there for uh, folks um, who might be needing to be head, uh, heading out. Um, I can answer a few more questions, but um, you know, generally, uh, you can go to our website, parsonscko.com. Um, we have a, a lot of great content that can help you with this and, and other uh, challenges related to your engagement architecture. Um, you know, pretty much if it touches us on how organizations interact with your audiences, we can talk with you about it and help you with it. Um, we have a lot of content, articles, videos, a uh, fantastic podcast, uh, and events like these. Um, so please don't be hesitant about reaching out. Um, and um, uh, I thank you for your time.